Hey, songwriters, I am super excited for today's guest here at At Home Songwriting. I have been watching his YouTube videos and jamming to his music for a couple of years now, and I'm very grateful that he has accepted my invitation to join us here at At Home Songwriting. Today, our guest is Patrick Breen, and Patrick is a multi-instrumentalist. He's a songwriter, he's a producer, he's a video producer, video creator, YouTuber. Woo! He's creative. So I'm super excited to talk to him about his music and songwriting and all kinds of stuff like that. So let's jump in and talk to Patrick Breen. Patrick, welcome to the channel. Hey, man, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you know, I reached out to you because I've been watching your videos for a number of years. And um, I have to admit your songs about the best practices about songwriting and some of the songwriting tips that you've put out there. I've gone back and watched a few times myself because I find myself getting into a rut of worrying about, am I doing the right thing? Like, do I have the right inspiration? Do I have the right motivation? So I'm so grateful that you're on the channel today and and welcome. Thanks so much, man. That's really, really nice to hear. You know, you, you make videos and you put content out there and you kind of don't know if anybody's going to vibe with it. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy to hear that it was, it was a good video for you. Yeah. And what I've liked about your channel and kind of when I think about you, I think about you as a musician. I think about you as a songwriter, a producer, a YouTuber. Obviously, you're producing videos. How do you describe yourself? Like when you think about who's Patrick Breen, how do you how do you describe that? It's tough and it's funny. Uh, you know, friends of mine and my wife, they're always like, you got to you got to be more direct with people when they're talking to you and they're asking you what you do, because, yeah, it's uh, I have completely embraced this thing that is going on right now where you are kind of like a freelance creative individual and you have to, like, wear a lot of different hats. I think at the at the core and at the heart of everything that I do is a love of music and my uh, mission statement, if you will, or or my main goal in life is just to uh, fill my life and my professional life and my personal life with as many things uh, that are music related and, you know, that are kind of at that core of what I love as possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. How did music start for you in your life? So music, um, I am I am blessed to be a part of a musical family sort of okay. uh, my mother and my father both accountants right like they <laughs> could not be any less musical they love music my they're parents, rocking the spreadsheets right exactly exactly they were like <laughs> that's a whole nother rabbit hole we could go down but <laughs> um, my dad i uh, credit with introducing me to a lot of the music i i love today um which that is so important being a listener and being kind of a, a student of you know all the music that has come before you and asking yourself oh what is, what is it about this that i really love we were just talking about minneapolis before we started, started yeah. what is it about these prince records that i love so much you know what i mean um in in, in pursuing that in in your development as a musician um and then my mom also introduced me to a lot of great music but more so than that, my mom really encouraged me to pursue music. Music was in, you know, my mother's side of the family. Her grandfather was a piano teacher and uh, studied piano, I believe, at like the university level. So he was a very, you know, talented. I never met him, but I've I've heard so many stories. And um, he kind of instilled in this rule, and I've said this before, instilled in this rule in our family that, you know, everybody had to learn piano and you had to at least study it for seven years. Um, so from the time I was seven, because that's when, you know, everybody says, okay, it's seven, you know, the child's brain is in a place where it can tackle something like the piano, right? For most people. Yeah. So I did that for seven years and just didn't enjoy it. Right. But of course, in hindsight, being an adult now, I'm so grateful for that foundation that that my mom helped me establish. And then, you know, I kind of got away from it for a while. Right. Like, I think when you're young, you just want to do whatever is going to allow you to fit in uh, yeah. oh, a lot of sports, a lot of hanging with friends. I was into skateboarding because that was cool. Like. And I think my mom just kind of sensed in me that I loved music, but it was kind of a love that I had like at home. It wasn't something that I was sure. really 
presenting out in the world. So one Christmas, she, she bought me a guitar, which I, I actually still have today. It was hilarious. It's like this blue acoustic, like Ibanez starter guitar. Nice. And I still have it. It's not, it's not here. It's at my mother's house, but you know, I probably will never get rid of that guitar because of how significant it was for me. And that was probably eighth grade, ninth grade. And for, you know, up until I was, you know, in college, I pretty much just played in my bedroom. And nobody yeah. really knew. And kind of towards the end of high school, when I had a little bit more confidence, I started to show people and tell people that I was playing guitar. And some friends that I grew up with, uh, we would play in like my buddy Steve's basement. And it was like the coolest thing, right? Um, he was a drummer. So we had like the, the, you know, garage band kind of a vibe. It was a lot of fun. Um, but it was in college where I really started, you know, in college, fresh start going to school with nobody who knows me and I could kind of be whoever I wanted to. And I just said, like, I love this music thing. I'm just going to go and do this. Cool. It was four years of faking it till you make it. Um, but by the time I was done with college, I, I had played a lot of shows. I had written a lot of songs and I, I at least felt prepared to kind of set out and be like, okay, let's keep this, this thing rolling. You know what I mean? Yeah. So did you take guitar lessons or was that more like a self-taught thing for you? So I was self-taught. Um, yeah, I, I, I really am self-taught. I, you know, I had yeah. I took like music theory classes in high school as like one of my main electives. So I did that every year and I had that foundation from piano. So I had kind of a, a little bit of knowledge and I was sort of figuring some stuff out on guitar. And I actually learned a lot from one of the guys who I played in a band with, right? Like sometimes yeah. it's not as deep as like going and getting a lesson. It's just like, yeah. who they just show you am with yeah going to show you some stuff and that's super powerful and then right out of school you know i had i i kind of started realizing this like huh i learn a lot from these guys who are a lot more talented than me so i started hanging out with a guy in town who was like he's probably like five to ten years older than me but he was nasty with it <laughs> and finally i got to a point where um kind of a, a mentor of mine his name is kyle querick he's a amazing dude um I was playing in a church band with him and he was an amazing guitarist, but he's just like, he like loves bass too. So he was playing bass and I was playing guitar and I just pulled him aside after, after church one day. And I was like, Hey, can I like sit down with you and pay you to like take lessons? Cause I, I have all this theory knowledge and I'm trying to apply it to this. And can you just help me? And I don't know. I, I took lessons with him for like a couple months and it was just like, it was one of the best things I could have done because it just like in a very short amount of time, I was taking this these two different roadmaps I had and putting them on top of each other. And it was like game changing. So awesome. I am somebody who believes there is so much benefit in figuring it out yourself in yeah. going through that process of like being super frustrated and not really knowing. Uh, 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 and like that pursuit will kind of expand uh, your your threshold a little bit. And it'll, it's one of those things that will keep you going when the craft gets tough. Um, but there also is tremendous benefit from like, just sitting down with somebody who's already figured all this stuff out and just letting them show you the way. Yeah, I actually, I started teaching myself how to play piano and keyboards. Um, I went to a lesson one time and <clears throat> she didn't want to teach me Janet Jackson songs. So I was like, this isn't this isn't cool. <laughs> you yeah. know, so so I was like, I can figure this out. And then my dad had a friend of his that taught me how to play Axel Foley, the Beverly Hills cop theme. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's course, yeah. it. but um so like he showed me that and then it was like I just kept learning by listening and and then I'd buy books and and so I'm self-taught. If you watch me play like people who have had piano lessons, they're like, your fingering is weird. Like you don't use all of your fingers. And I'm like, yeah, I taught myself, but it yeah. sounds good, <laughs> you know? So. Yeah. No, that's, that's, I think sometimes it's just like, I, there's, um, you know, we all know Jimmy played guitar, you know, kind of upside down, but he restrung it. There's right. a guy, Cautious Clay. Yeah. It took me a minute to like realize exactly what was going on. He plays guitar 
takes a right-handed guitar, plays it. I guess he just flips it this way, but he doesn't change the string. So it's his his high his top string is his high E string. And I'm interesting. Like, Isn't so that weird? But he's a super talented songwriter and artist and a great guitar player. And it just goes to show you, like, wow. Sometimes it's just about like doing it in a way that feels comfortable to you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So obviously you were learning instruments, the musician side. When did songwriting come into this? Were you also starting to write songs right away or, or did that come later? So kind of in that chapter of my life where nobody really knew what I was doing. Um, I was just kind of sitting at home in in my bedroom and just kind of like, here's what it was. Let's backtrack a little bit because this is kind of funny that like, I was talking to my mom the other day and she was like, you know, you've always loved to be creative and specifically like applying that through technology, which is really funny because kind of my love of songwriting and what would come much, much, much later, a love of producing were kind of, uh, both of those seeds got planted at the same time. So cool. my, my high school graduation present from my parents was a MacBook and great gift thank you mom and dad uh good going away to college gift right yeah. and i remember that summer um i had garage band for the first time ever i never had anything like that before so i would sit down and just record my guitar into the built-in microphone record my voice into the built-in microphone and in a summer i made like 20 songs cool this is amazing. And I don't know what I loved more. Like I, I, I would have to take a time machine back. I don't know what I, what it was about it that I loved more writing music or making, making records, right? Like sure. that, I think I love both of them, but it's like, at the end of the day, you know, you always, you're always kind of fine tuning, you know, the jobs you're saying yes to, and the things you're, you know, you always want to point yourself towards like what do i love the most and i ask myself that question a lot and i really do think my favorite thing is to just like be in the studio making music and making records right don't so you think songwriting that... ties into that yeah big time because what i've discovered is i worked with a lot of i worked with a lot of producers over the years that like didn't quite get my interpretation of the song right like you write a mm -hmm. song and it's usually, you know, nowadays it's a little different, but, you know, 10 years ago, it was like you write a song and it's in even before that, obviously, you write a song and it's a lot of times, you know, music and lyrics and it's, the music is pretty simple, right? It's like yep. demo on the guitar or a demo on the piano or whatever, whatever the case may be. And what I found working with a lot of producers is the producer is responsible for being like the songwriter of the track of everything yeah. that's going on on the record. Yeah. And that's a skill that I think it it takes somebody who has an inclination as a songwriter to be able to fulfill as a producer if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think I mean you have people like Rick Rubin, right? He's yeah, he's like excited. an amazing um I can't wait to read that. I just got it yesterday, so I'm excited. Anyway, sorry. Um but he is an amazing producer and he will tell you he's not really a musician he's just he just knows what he likes so that that's possible but i think for me so let's rewind i'm sure i'm older than you but i started recording on a cassette eight track oh, man. this was i mean the internet didn't exist computers were only the rich kids had computers at this time right so you couldn't really record on them so i was recording on eight track cassette and for me, production was always part of the songwriting process. I think I was top lining before top lining was a thing because I was like, I can make the track sound really good and then also put melody and lyrics that sound really good too. You know, so that's kind of how I've written for for years and years. So it's it's funny to hear you say like I started on a MacBook. It's like, wow. oh, you youngster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's so funny, man. Like. Uh, it's so funny how like I'm a big proponent and advocate for like using the tools, right? Like yeah. you have super, super holistic people that are like, go get a cabin in the woods with an upright piano or an acoustic guitar and just write your record that way. And I'm like, that if that 
speaks to you, do it. But there's so much that's available today. And yeah. in, in, in the, the barrier to entry from a price standpoint has come down so much. Like the, yeah. you can have a really sweet songwriting room like I have, production room, whatever, for not a lot of money, comparatively speaking. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's so funny how that kind of sparked this love for creating. And I think that's at the end of the day, yes, I, I pursued, you know, how to write better songs. I, I worked with some really, really talented writers and lyricists over the years who kind of taught me some things. But I think at the end of the day, like you got to love what you're doing and whatever medium that falls into go in that yeah. direction. So from a songwriting inspiration standpoint, I know before we got on here, we talked about Prince, you yeah. know, print Minneapolis. That's where I'm at. That's the home of Prince, which you need to come see Paisley park because I think you'd love it. Yeah, I've got to. Um, but were there other influences for you as well? Like who were you listening to where you were like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it has come in different seasons. I, it's funny. I love Prince now. Didn't listen to a lot of Prince as a kid. Um, when I was a kid, it was kind of like whatever my parents were listening to. Um, you know, I always talk about being in the car with my dad because my dad was from, I grew up in upstate New York and my dad was from the New York metropolitan area. Um, so we would take a lot of trips down to the city, out to Long Island. Um, and there were a lot of long car rides where we just listened to music, right? Um, there was a lot of Stevie Wonder. My dad went through like a big U2 phase. Uh, the Eagles were always a staple in those car rides. Um, so there was definitely a lot of that. My dad liked the police a lot, Sting. So I was getting nice. so much like really quality music. On my mom's side, uh, James Taylor is a big yeah. family favorite. So I was getting exposed at a young age to a lot of music. And like, that was what I was listening to. And then as I got a little older, you know, when I was, when I was younger, it was like Jet was one of my favorite bands. Are you going to be my girl? Which they have a cool. awesome catalog. Anybody who's missing rock <laughs> and roll, I definitely encourage you to go down that rabbit hole. They're awesome. Um, but even in, even in college and in kind of out of school, it kind of evolved, right? Like I was very much into the jam band scene for a while. I was, I was into uh, like singer songwriter stuff for a while. Death Cab for Cutie was one of my favorite bands. Ben Gibbard was one of my favorite songwriters. He did the postal service project. I just, I, I loved how he put lyrics together. Um, and then, you know, I also listened to a lot of hip hop as a kid. Um, and in my kind of like adult years kind of picking from the different things that i like i go back to like a lot of old j dilla records a lot of Eric yeah. Lou, a lot of um plus i really like i love common kind of like that whole early 2000s electric lady studios uh vibe really nice. love a lot of that i love the hip-hop side of that um a lot of r and um, I dig. There's a lot of funk records that I like. Um, but yeah, kind of what where I'm at right now is like, I just, I just like music that moves. I like music that kind of gets you into like, gets you into a vibe. And, you know, I'm getting a little older. I'm an adult now. And I kind of, I, I enjoy things that make me feel like a kid again and put me in that space where I'm like, yeah. Just, you know, feeling the vibe, feeling the energy. So that's kind of what I'm into right now. So are you writing at this point? Are you working on like your own stuff? Or are you producing other artists or what does that picture look like for you? So I was doing, I live in LA now. And when I, I had, my wife and I moved out here 2020, heck of a time to make a cross country move. We moved. Perfect. To perfect time. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Um, we were living in New York and my whole time in New York, I was pursuing kind of like a very traditional artist career. Um, I was with a small indie label for, for a brief period of time and was doing very, very traditional stuff like Patrick, you're the artist. 
here is the producers you're working with for this project. Here's songwriting support. Um, you know, you're going to make demos by yourself. You're going to make demos with, you know, your team. You're going to go into the studio, do all that kind of stuff. And in that process, I had a lot of great, great experiences for sure. But in that process, I really learned about the disconnect between artist and producer and how important it is for those two you know, people to be on the same page or sometimes it's yeah. people. And in that time, um, I have since kind of uh, gone back to being an independent artist and I started asking myself, okay, what what is it? What kind of music do I want to make? Um, and a lot of that music has required me to, not required me, but his his, I want to go out and find people to work on those records with, right? So okay, I, I made this hip hop beat. What do I do with that? I'm not a rapper. What, would I be open to trying to rap? Yes, but who can I find right now that can help me get this track over the finish line? So I started yeah. working with a rapper here in LA and he's awesome. Um, we have a lot of tunes that are coming out as co-releases, as you know, stuff that I'm producing for his project. Um, people who have kind of listened to my music will know an artist that I work with. His name's Javi. Uh, yeah just recorded a we just recorded five songs for him over the weekend and then we have a sixth sixth song that is a co-release right so i'm co-writing with him i'm producing his ep uh he's kind of doing a full record in in two eps so we're on the first ep right now um producing with him uh writing with him and just kind of being a helping him bring a vision to life while also saying like, Hey dude, I have this like super, super funky track that I think you singing on this with me would be awesome. And he and I had done a, he, we've already done a tune like that. So this is kind of like the, the, the prequel to the song that we already put out, if that makes and sense. Yeah. And that's, is that morning light? Morning light. Yeah. So okay. this is called midnight static. This is like the night before morning light is like the morning after. So it's awesome. kind of the yin and yang of, of the two, but um, cool. we just wanted to, we were hanging out one day and we were just writing a, writing tunes as we do. And that's kind of how we approach it now. Like any artist that I work with, it's like, let's, let's take back all of the, uh, all of the restraints, right? Like mm -hmm. I've been in a lot of writer's rooms where it's like, okay, this is the reference. This is what it's got to sound like. You know, we want an Ed Sheeran vocal on a Rihanna B. And it's just like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? So are you, so that's a, I mean, that's a good question. You know, are you going in thinking about how is this going to be commercial or are you like, let's make the best thing possible, whatever that thing is. And then if it works, awesome, but we can write another song. The second one. Um, okay. I'm sure you're aware of the whole world of sync and sync licensing. And even beyond that, um, labels will reach out to songwriters and say, we have a new artist. We're looking for songs that fit this vibe. Um, it's a very common thing in the industry to get a prompt, get a reference and go to work. Yeah. I that is not my favorite way to make music, right? I want to, I want to sit down. I want to work with an artist, um, and say, you know, this is what I'm listening to right now. What are you listening to? And we kind of hang and we chill and we talk about life and Hey, what are you going through? Like, you know, whatever. I mean, uh, uh, another artist I'm, I'm working with not to share too much of his information, but he's going through a breakup right now. So he's got a whole different perspective that married happily married Patrick doesn't have. Yeah. We talk and we, we, we get into that headspace and we say, okay, like, cool. We want to write with this theme. Now let's, let's find a vibe for this. And we start listening to music and we just, we go back and forth and it's just like, you kind of isolate yourself in like a room like this and you just start to envision what this thing is going to sound like. And then, you know, we were talking about earlier, all the years that led up to, being able to sit down, hear something and be being able to recreate something that sounds similar. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, you've got to do a lot of work to learn your instrument, learn production, learn a bunch of stuff. But I am 
fortunately in a place now where, yeah, I can listen to a few things, say, okay, we're going to paint a picture with these colors on our palette and let's go to work. And that to me is so much more of a gratifying and satisfying music making experience than, hey, here's a prompt or, hey, we got to do this for this commercial thing. It is, you're kind of catching lightning in a bottle when you have a big commercially successful song. Um, and everybody that I have seen and, and know who does it well, they're just kind of like, I don't know what just happened. I just made this thing and people really liked it. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself too. And, and, you know, we met on YouTube. So this is another thing that I ask myself when I make a video too. If this goes, if this thing that I made goes, what's going to happen is people are going to like it and they're going to want more of that thing from me. So you're better off just making stuff that you'd like to create because in the best case scenario, um, you're going to have to make more things like that. Yeah. Well, how many artists do you hear about that? You know, they, they sign a deal, they start working on songs that really aren't them. And then now all of a sudden they're painted into a corner where, you know, the only thing people want to hear is something that's not them, you know? So yeah, yeah. I, I've been in, I've been in a lot of rooms where I just am pulled out of it. And, and maybe that's mm -hmm. a thing that I need to work on, but at the end of the day, you, you the heart wants what it wants, right? Like you, you yeah. want thing. Nobody who started pursuing music, well, this isn't true, but most of us who started pursuing music, we did it for the love of it. So why do we get to this place where we feel like, well, we got to do something that isn't for the love of it. I would rather do it as a hobby, put my music out, build an online audience and go have a day job. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Well, Just I think- why, I, I, why YouTube came to be. Well, I was talking to another um, songwriter, um, Bert Byler, who's in the Americana genre. I had him on my channel recently. Awesome. And he we were talking about people forget that music can be a hobby. You know, mm. in, in our culture, people think if you're good at something instantly, you're like, you have to make money with it. You have to make money with it. Oh, good. And, and people think, unfortunately, that if you're not making money, then it must not be very good. And I think it, that's, you know, not true at all. Yeah, that that couldn't be more spot on. I, I encounter that a lot because one of the things that you find when you pursue music for a lot and you're very outward with it, like I am, you know, I'm, I'm posting online. My friends and family who don't really know me on a day-to-day -day basis are seeing this stuff. And it is a little bit of that. It's like, well, you know, are you making any money? <laughs> and it's like, when did that become like, it's exactly what you said. When did that become the metric of success? If you right. are doing something that you love and it can be something that it can be a hobby that takes up most of your time, right? Yeah, that's me. But if you yeah. love it, man, that, that counts for something. And there's so many unhappy people today that just like, they just don't have any passion in their life. And the older you get, there, there's not extracurricular programs for adults, really. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Come from this space where, you know, high school is, a v in, in college especially, very nurturing environments. There's like, well, you might as well try it now because when you're an adult, it's not fun anymore. And <laughs> life is what you make it. Yeah. You know? So... How do the songs start for you? Are you a top liner? Are you a lyrics first? Are you all of the above? Like, what is that sound? What is that process like for you? When I was doing more of the legwork myself, it was um, all over the place, right? It was kind of like uh, you're trying to get, you know, this divine download, as some people call it. Um, Stephen Pressfield calls it the muse, right? You're like, kind of sitting there creating and working, waiting for kind of lightning to strike. So in that regard, when I was doing lyrics, music, uh, production, when I was doing all of the things, it was kind of like, well, whatever, whatever kind of comes first. Nowadays, my workflow is what I really like is, is, is making music, making beats as the kids call it, Chad. Uh, <laughs> 
And, um, you know, it's, it's not all, it's not exclusively hip hop. Kind of the three buckets that I, that I go to are like old school hip hop, because that kind of has the, there's a nice Venn diagram where, uh, kind of boom bap and, uh, Neo soul crossover. So I really like that. Um, and there's a really nice genre where beats and electric guitar merge. And that's kind of this Neo soul world that, you know, a lot of people are into right now. So I really dig that um, because it kind of scratches a couple of different itches for me. So I I exist there a lot. I'm getting really, really into this like 80s Casio synthesizer kind of revival. Um, I've got a Juno over here. I've got this new uh, kind of hybrid synthesizer that just came out on my desk. And I like, I love that kind of stuff. Um, So my my songwriting process is very much like let's sit down and create. I'm very, I'm a firm believer in keeping those muscles active, right? Like keeping the creative uh, process always open. Yeah. With lyrics, sometimes they just come. I was writing something the other day that everything that I do, right? Like even if it's for a YouTube project, I'm always like, let's, be diligent about this because you never know what's going to happen with a song. A great example is uh, I met a a rapper out in Venice. He's uh, the rapper that I work with. His name is 1G West Garrett. He's a lovely guy. Um, Look him up, people. He's awesome. Super talented guy. And he and I just kind of met and, you know, we did the Instagram follow sort of a thing. And I get a message from him a couple weeks later and he's like, oh, like you're about this music. Like, I like, I like what you're making. I said, Hey man, anything that's on my Instagram, anything that you hear on YouTube, like that's all unspoken for music. So if there's anything you really dig, take, you know, let me know. I'll send you the beat. You know, we can, we can work on something. He sends me back a couple and he goes, yeah, but this one is my favorite. The one that he said was his favorite was a gear demo that I did for this guitar company, D'Angelico. Um, Sweetwater has a summer event every year and D'Angelico wanted me to do like a little demo with one of their new guitars. I think this was like 2021. So it was like a completely virtual event. So I made them a little video. I wrote a little guitar piece with some, you know, like a beat behind it. Um, and this rapper loved it. So it's it's a single that we're, we're finishing the music video right now, but that's coming out soon. Awesome. But it, it just goes to show you like, keeping your creative process open and always creating. It's a little bit of a tangent, but so important because you never know what's going to come of this stuff. So I was sitting down the other day doing kind of a similar thing, right? Like I'm making a video for YouTube and I'm just like, okay, like let me make something with this piece of gear that I'm really loving right now. So I start making this thing and like lyrics and vocal melodies just start coming. And I'm like, uh, where's my mic? Okay, like flip this recording. <laughs> and it's just like, It happens like that sometimes and you start to develop, uh, I guess, an ear, I guess, like an imagination. You start hearing the song before it exists. And my experience has been developing a relationship with your ear. You talked about Rick Rubin. He has for years developed a, a relationship with his intuition. He always says, honestly, I think my strong suit is I have really good taste. Yeah. But what that that comes back to something we said earlier, like have an eclectic taste in music. Do a do a lot of listening. I, you know, I like my streaming services and the occasional video game and going out with friends, but like my free time as much as possible is filled with music. My wife is always yelling at me in the car, like, can we just talk? Can we talk? <laughs> We've always got to have the music on. I'm like, sweetheart, you're on your phone. Like, I'm gonna. I'm going to listen to some Dilla. I'm going to listen to, you know, this new, you know, record that just came out. Uh, Anyway, the point is, I think the creative process for me has become like whatever the shortest trip every day from idea to finished thing, take that. If you're really, really struggling to make lyrics, but you're writing a dozen guitar pieces a day. You're like, if this has been me and maybe this is somebody out there and I just want to <laughs> give people peace. If you're like, oh, I got all these guitar ideas, blah, 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 blah. You're, you write 
the 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 bed music for the verse 10 different ways but you only have like one or two lyric or melody ideas that's cool like just write a lot of music that's good too and find people who can kind of uh, be like a jigsaw puzzle piece that fits perfectly with you. That's why I love working with people like Javi when lyrics are very, very personal to me. I, I've never been one. I have such a hard time writing like the feel good song because the way that I mm. want to express myself lyrically is like, Hey, I'm going through something and I got to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah very self-critical of like how I want to say something. But when I get in the room with another lyricist and they're like, here's the topic, here's the thing we want to talk about. And it's almost like it's their story, but I can throw in little anecdotes from my story lyrically. We're, we're good with that. Yeah. You know, so it's, it took a long time for me to identify those strengths and identify kind of how I want to write music. And then you kind of bring in the personnel to support around how you want to make music. And there's literally, there's literally no right way. The more you kind of start working in the industry, you'll be like, oh, hey, you'll show up to a writing session. Oh, hey, what's up? What do you, you know, what do you, what, what's going on with you? What do you do? Oh, like I just write vocal melodies. It's like, oh, that's cool. So you're singing today. No, I'm just here to write the vocal melodies, not even lyrics. It's like, <laughs> oh, like that's dope that you're that. Yeah here to do that um but the point that i'm trying to make is songwriting doesn't have to be this super uh all-inclusive thing like you don't have to be good at all of the different facets you i encourage everybody to sharpen all of those tools but at the end of the day you are always gonna have things that you are kind of more inclined to do and in this season of my life, as I'm leaning more into a producer artist role, that's kind of where what I create on a day-to-day -day basis. If lyrics and, and vocal melodies come, great. Um, but kind of where I once was, where it was like, do everything, I'm leaning way more into do what you love and what you're best at. So as we start to wrap up today, do you have any other thoughts for people that might be new to, to songwriting and, and, you know, new to writing their own music, or maybe they're new to being an artist? What advice do you have to the newbies? This is totally anecdotal, but figure out a way, excuse me, my voice is cracking, figure out a way to record yourself and listen back. Hmm. You can, nowadays, these things are so good. You can wear headphones, record a vocal part, use this as an acoustic mic. If you're recording piano or drums or guitar, throw that into a free DAW. If you're on a Mac, GarageBand, and start to get a sense for making something and hearing yourself back because that's going to help you grow. It's a really frustrating process because even when you've been doing that, this as long as you and I have, you still make stuff that's not good. And you're like, okay, that wasn't it. And when you're, when you're early on, a lot of what you're going to create isn't going to be, you're going to be like, this doesn't sound like what I listened to on Spotify. But the relentless pursuit of getting what you make to sound like the stuff on Spotify is the best thing. It's the best thing. It's frustrating and it's beautiful. Um, but from a, from a growth standpoint, I think it's that. From a practical, like what can you do today to start stuff? I said this in one of my last videos that you referenced. Um, do something every day to scratch your creative itch. And it doesn't have to be as rigid as what most people will say, like, write every day, put make a demo every day. Hey, if you do that, you are going to be so well off. If you make a polished demo every day, you are only going to benefit from that. But if the if the sound of that makes your skin crawl and it make you're, you're just not ready for that. So get yourself to a point where you are ready to make a lot of music. And, and that requires you to 
you know, you can get, you can get a book like the war of art. It's a Julia Cameron book. She talks yeah. about morning pages. Uh, she talks about artist dates. She talks about kind of recognizing that you have, uh, I think she talks about two different selves, but I think we have multiple versions of ourselves. Um, in in the artist side of yourself, because it's not something that exists in your 24 hour a day life, you have to nurture it. You have to yeah. grow it. You have to grow your skills. So if you want to write better lyrics, just write, write a lot of stuff, write about your day, put if if you want to do the you know notes thing on your phone, fine. But I think there's something uh, really wholesome and nurturing about getting alone with your thoughts and just writing pen to paper. I think that's great. Yeah. If you want to write music, if you're like, hey, I, you know, I'm I'm poetic. I've got a lot of lyrical things. I've got a lot of of, of vocal ideas. I've, I'm really good at writing top lines and melodies. I need to get better at the music aspect of it. There are so many rabbit holes you can go down. You can, there are so many different ways to make music. I was in the studio this weekend where the entire process was out of the box. It was all, it was old school, man. It was so dope. And it was all, you know, everything was analog preamps and compressors and everything is being routed. And it's like the, the purists way to record. And it was awesome. There's a, if you want to, if that speaks to you, go that route. If you want to be somebody who's very plug and heavy and you do everything in the box, that's great too. If you want to do kind of a hybrid thing, which is what I do, um, that's great too. But you just got to pursue it. You got to learn about it. You've got to, okay, I don't know how to make beats. So where can I find samples? Okay. There's this thing called splice. There's this thing called arcade by output. What are they going to do? How are they going to, you know, enhance my workflow? Yeah. But learn about that and then just like get get to making music, man. Get to doing it. You know, people, it's people are like, oh, I want to get in good shape. But then they spend two months researching what gym plan or what program or what diet. It's just like that's great if you want to be a research heavy individual. I'm kind of that way too, very analytical. But you still, you can't let that get in the way of actually creating things. So just find a way that speaks to you, find instruments that speak to you. You know, having, having all of these guitars on my wall is great. I don't need them. I need one. You need one thing. Yeah. You have one bass. That's all you need. Get, get a bass, get a microphone, get a guitar, get a one synth, get one thing and learn it really well. Um, you know, there's these, a lot of... <laughs> A lot of YouTubers have so much gear and I'm getting to that point, but it's <laughs> got to get to a point where you're like, this is too much. I can't, I can't accept this because you know what? It's gonna, I'm just not going to learn it. So give yeah. yourself time to find something that really interests you. Go all in on it, make music with it and see what happens. I mean, sometimes the best stuff that you're going to create is on the other side of curiosity and trying to yeah. figure it out. Well, and I think too, there's something to be said that limitations cause creativity, right? Because okay. if you if you do only have a certain set of gear, you should learn how to use it to the best of your ability, you know, because it's really not about the gear. It's about how you use it, you know? One of the things I did this year, which I, I do this every year, I made a DAW template, right? So every time I open my DAW, it's got boom, it's got my stuff loaded, it's got all of my inputs with my interface loaded, but even more specific than that, I've got the four to five software instruments that I want to use on a regular basis. And that yeah. even that is a lot, but I want to say to myself, okay, let's, let's make me, let's, I always say this, paint a picture with only so many colors, right? And yeah. what are you going to do? What are you, what are you going to paint? If all you have is to use this gear. So I would definitely encourage that. Don't, there's so much out there. You will overwhelm yourself. Um, yeah. So nowadays, what you see is companies are doing like ecosystems, right? Like, oh, well, you know, now this plugin company now makes software instruments and now they do that. And it's like, just take a deep breath, find the stuff that you like and just stick to it and be like, eh, you know what? This is what I use. I don't need to, 
just because it's new doesn't mean it's good for you. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Yep. I've fallen into that trap. You know, new plugins, new instruments, upgrade. And it's like, I never even used the first version the way that I could have, you know? Exactly. Well, Patrick, it's been great having you on the channel. Um, if people do want to check out your music, your channel, how do they find you? You can find me on YouTube and Spotify are probably the two places to find me. Um, you know, my, my music's on Spotify. I am a regular uploader as best I can on YouTube. And, you know, I just, I, I, my YouTube channel is just kind of a place where I like to, you know, give some tips and tricks and stuff like that. And also check out new gear that I'm really interested in and make music with it and ultimately help people find the things that are going to help them make music. So it's kind of the mission statement. And uh, awesome. I do the best I can to deliver on that. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being on the channel. Hopefully we can, you know, collaborate again in the future. And thank you so much. Thanks, Chad. I appreciate it, man. Awesome. So if you liked Patrick's interview, definitely check out his YouTube channel, check out his music online. And I just appreciate you joining me as well. Again, if you want to join the at home songwriting online community, you can share your songs, you can meet other songwriters, you can connect with me. The link is in the description. And there's also a code to get some money off some of my online courses. And there's even a free course on writing verses. So check that out as well. But if you dig these videos, if you want to learn Learn more about at home songwriting and how the craft of songwriting can help you write better songs hit subscribe hit the bell and check out these other videos that i think you will like related to songwriting here at at home songwriting so let's keep it rolling let's move to the next video let's go